Hi, this is Chris Ostrowski, Oracle Consultant with 4th Month Consulting. And in this video lesson, we're going to take a look at how to set up an X server running on your PC. And a lot of people will ask, why are you interested in setting up an X server on your PC if you're an Oracle professional? And one of the main reasons is the fact that just about all modern Oracle software uh, requires you to have an X server up and running in order to install it if you're running, if you're trying to install it on a uh, Linux or a Unix box. And if you don't have direct access to the console or direct access to the machine where you are installing it, this can be a real challenge. A lot of times uh, you may be tasked with installing a piece of Oracle software on a server that's at a remote location. So this can be a real challenge uh, if you have to get the software up and running. So we're going to take a look at how to set up an X server running locally on your PC. There's two pieces of software that you're going to need in order to do this. One of them is called an X server, an X Windows server, and the other one is going to be a Telnet client. Uh, the X Windows server confuses a lot of people when they hear that. I think a lot of people think of their PCs as a client and where the database is running or where some other piece of information is running on a server that they access, they think of that as a server. But the X Windows server is actually going to be running locally on your PC. Uh, it's a server in the sense that it's going to accept commands from uh, where you're executing your program and it's going to serve up the Windows locally on your machine. Machine. So it's a little confusing, but the X server is something that actually runs locally on your machine. There's a lot of commercial X Windows servers out there, but we're going to take a look at a free one. And if one of the best places to get uh, this information is from a site called Sigwin. For those of you who are not familiar with Sigwin, Sigwin is a, a site where you can download some software and it gives you basically a Linux-like environment for Windows. You can see right there in the, the middle of the screen, they have that information for you right there. Sigwin is a Linux-like environment for Windows. And what you can do is you can use this software to download uh, other bits and pieces to give you a fully Unix-like shell inside your Windows environment. And one of the things you can download is an is a, an X Windows server, and we're going to take a look at doing that right now. So if you go to the Sigwin site and you download the startup program, the startup program executes, and then it starts asking you questions about what you want inside your environment. So here's a uh, the Sigwin setup, and I'm not going to run through the whole thing because I already have it installed on my machine. But just to give you an example of what it's like. You can install all the different pieces from the internet, which is what you'll do most of the time. The directory where you want to store all the information, the local package directory. And then it starts asking you questions about, do you want to go out to the internet and look for information? So we'll click on yes here, and you can see here's all the mirror sites that are out there. Uh, they're all pretty much pretty comprehensive for all of the different Sigwin packages that are out there. So uh, I don't have a particular one that I pick. You can pick just about any one of these, and you'll see some of them are faster than others. Some of them have more complete distributions, but I'll just pick one here at random, this mirrorservice.org. When you select a mirror site, it goes out there and it lists all of the different Sigwin pieces that are available from this particular site. And in a second, this will come back and it'll show all of the different things that I can install on my particular server. So here's uh, the option to select the different packages that are available to me. And if I click on all, you can see they're broken down by all these different categories. There's only two that you need in order to run an X Windows server. So if we go under X11 here and we scroll down, it's already smart enough to see that I've installed a couple of the packages. Anything that has a current value is something that I've installed already. Most of these are libraries and fonts. You don't have to worry too much about them. When you select a piece to be installed that has dependencies, those dependencies will be selected to be installed automatically also. So the two pieces you need for your X Windows server to run properly is a package called Xterm, which we'll scroll down, and we'll see that I have installed right here. I had here's the current version of what I have. And in order to select something, you just click on this column right here. The B stands for binary. Let me let me make this a little bigger, and the S stands for source. If you're interested in seeing the source that goes behind it. 
So if I click on this, it either goes from skip or it shows the version, and I can pick if I want the binary, if I want the source, if I want both of them, or if I don't want it at all. So I've selected my X terminal here, and all the dependencies were selected for me automatically. The other piece that I do need that is not selected for you automatically is something called X host. And you can see there's X host right there, and I also have them installed. When I click on next, it'll go out to the mirror site and start downloading all of the packages so I can build up my Unix-like environment inside of Windows. I'm not going to do that now since I already have that installed. But once you click on next and you install all the different pieces, you'll have an icon inside your start menu to start up your, uh, your Sigwin environment. So I'm just going to go here to my start window and I'm going to start that up. And here's my Sigwin Bash shell. And it acts just like a Unix shell. I have all of the commands that are available to me inside of Unix. I can do DF minus H. And you can see that it maps my local C drive to this drive called uh, Sig drive slash C. I have access to all the different pieces here. Uh, I have a Perl interpreter. I have, you know, VI. I have the full uh, complement of different pieces that I can use here. I didn't install VI, that's why it's showing up as command not found. Uh, I had just installed the basics that went along with the shell with my X Windows environment. So if I want to start up my X Windows environment now, I can just do start X. And after it does a little bit of configuration, it'll start up my X window here. Come back in a second. And unfortunately, you can't resize this window, so it's going to be a little bigger than what I'm recording on my screen right here. But you can see that I have my X window here, and it automatically starts up uh, an X term for me. And again, I have all of the commands that are available. I can do DF minus H. I can do uh, anything else that I've installed in this particular uh, shell from the Internet. So now that I have this up and running, the first command I need to execute is that X host command. And what X host command, what the X host command with a plus sign uh, does is it allows any other uh, server to connect to my X server here and start sending information that I want to send uh, to this particular window. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a terminal command program called PuTTY to go over to my Linux server and then I'm going to actually start the installation for Oracle Database. I'm not going to actually run the Oracle Database right now, but I'm going to show you how the install works and how you can uh, see the information here in my X window so that if you need to go out and install a piece of Oracle software you don't have access to the console, you can go ahead and do that. So now that I have X host plus, and now that I've executed that command, any other server can connect to my X server and send information. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into a program called PuTTY. And what PuTTY is, is a program that allows me to establish terminal access um, to my server. And I have my server set up here, so I'm going to log in as root. And I'm going to SU over to my Oracle user. And inside my extract directory, I have a database directory, and there's my run installer program. And that's the one I'm going to run to actually install my database. So if I try to run this now, it's going to fail. So I'm going to do run installer, and I'll put an ampersand after it. And what it's going to do is it says the display variable isn't set, so that it's failed. So it doesn't know what X server to connect to. So it's trying to establish a connection there so it can start showing all the graphical screens. But I haven't told it where to connect to yet, so it doesn't know what to do. Where am I going to connect? This is the part that gets a little confusing. I'm going to connect to my local PC. So here's my, um, here's a command prompt, and you can see here's my Windows IP configuration. If you're not familiar with it, it's just IP config. And it shows all my different pieces of information. On my local network right now, this is my IP address, 192.168.0.113. So I'm going to copy that out of the command prompt. And then in my PuTTY, I'm going to export the display variable to be that. And then we do colon 0.0, .0 and that has to do with the windowing uh, that goes along with X windows. So now once I have that information set up, I should be able to run my run installer program and start seeing the information in the X windows that's running locally on my PC. 
So you can see now everything is passed where it had failed before because it couldn't understand the display variable. Everything's passed now. And if I go back into my X windows, you can see there's my installation screen. And now I can start walking through my installation screen. So the reason for creating this video was uh, a challenge that I had was uh, installing this as a consultant. I would uh, work with different clients. And again, like I said, I didn't have console access a lot of times. And I was looking for a, a cheap way of being able to set up an X Windows uh, server on, locally on my machine so that I can get these installs done uh, without having to pay for a commercial product. And hopefully this video provided you with enough information so you can get started uh, doing these things. Thanks a lot for watching. and. Tune in to my video channel on YouTube. It's 4th Month LLC uh, for other Oracle-based videos. Thank you very much.